Hi folks, this is uh, the problem from chapter 12, analysis of a thin wall pressure vessel that I'm going to be doing with shell elements. Now, what we have here is a, a pressure vessel, let's think about it as a very uh, thin tube, which is uh, closed at the, at the both ends. The dimensions are given here and it's internally pressurized. Uh, there is some theory here of what is the, uh, the, the expression for the hoop stress, axial stress, and radial stress. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to model this thing with shell elements. Now, notice there is symmetry involved here, and uh, I can take uh, any sector of this, such as what you see here on the, on the screen. Uh, I'm taking in the, in, the, in the book a 45-degree 40, sector, but it might as well be a 90-degree sector. In fact, let me, let me go ahead and take a 90 degree sector because if I take one that is not 90, what's going to happen is that one of the sides is going to be at an angle with respect to the global coordinate system. And therefore, you have to introduce the local coordinate system. And uh, that you can do yourself by uh, reading the tutorial in the book and proceeding as it says. So I'm going to take 90 degree sector to uh, make, make, make it less painful. However, you are responsible for uh, whatever is done uh, in the book or uh, <clears throat> uh, in the class. Okay, so uh, the situation is this. This uh, 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 sector that I want to take, there's two ways to do, to do it. As I mentioned in the lab on Friday, you can either create a solid and extract the surfaces, or you can do this uh, profile in a wireframe and surface design. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So uh, also remember that uh, uh, when I take a sector, there is also a plane of symmetry in the xy direction. Therefore, I need to model only half of, uh, half of this uh, geometry that you see on the right. Look at the thing on the left, and that's what I'm taking, just half of the height. Okay, now let's go to Katia. <clears throat> I'm going to start a part file because this is a part. It's not an assembly, a single part. And uh, since I'm going to create the surface directly, I, I am in the wireframe and surface design, not part design. So on a convenient plane such, such as the, uh, the uh, what is this, YZ plane, I will sketch. Uh, I will sketch that uh, L, inverted L, so something like this. And put the dimensions on it so that it's actually what's in the book. So... Let me make this thing uh, half of the height, and the height was uh, 20 inches, so I'll make this thing 10. All right. And then the radius here is, according to what's in the book, uh, uh, 6 inches. All right. That's what you've got. Good. So we now exit, and instead of extruding, now extruding will give you a shape like this. This is not what I want. I want to, to revolve this. So I use the icon next to it, and uh, the axis of revolution, right-click Z-axis, and the angle that I want to take it at is 90 degrees. <clears throat> if you're doing things like this, there is no reason, there is no reason to... Uh, uh, join the two surfaces. Otherwise, if you're extracting, these two surfaces have to, to be joined. Let me also hide this line that is not necessary. Okay, <clears throat> uh, why don't we apply material on this thing? Let's say it's made of uh, steel. And uh, let's see, where is the steel here? And you put it on the part, and you say, okay. Excellent. Uh, we are done here, so we switch to generative structural analysis. Keep in mind that we are doing stress. Uh, we are doing static analysis first of all. Furthermore, uh, the beam elements and shell elements they all have to be meshed manually by you. So let's go and find the shell element, which is in the toolbar, which says Model Manager, uh, where you see the traffic light, and the one in the middle, the one on the very right hand side is beam. We don't have a beam. Uh, we look at the uh, the one in the middle, which is shell, and you select that automatically. It's going to be shelled with this size element. If you're not happy with this, you can make this thing smaller. As a matter of fact, let me make it 0.5. Okay. 
All right. If you want to see the mesh, you put the cursor in the usual place on nodes and elements, right click mesh visual and just be patient, it's going to show up. Shell elements, uh, when we model them, they go on surfaces, therefore there is no thickness per se that you need to, to model. Uh, to do the rest of the problem, we're going to deactivate the mesh. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, this 90 degree arc that you see at the bottom is a plane of symmetry, which is parallel to the XY plane. Just look at your uh, uh, compass and see that this edge lies in the XY plane. Therefore, we know what the rules are. You go to user, define the strength. Let's uncheck all of these. So it's this bottom edge. This lies in the XY plane. Therefore, there is no displacement in the direction Z, which is obvious. Once you see this, then the rotations are, are Im immediate. In other words, whatever is checked here cannot be checked down there. Whatever is unchecked on the uh, for translation should be checked there. So this has to be checked and this has to be checked. And we say okay. All right. Now let's do these two side edges, this one and the one over here, the, the, the vertical one and the one there. So uh, let's do user defined strain again and let's uncheck these. So it's this edge up there and the vertical edge over here. The, uh, these two edges are plane of symmetry and the plane, that plane of symmetry is parallel to the XZ plane. You can see the coordinate system XZ plane. Therefore, there is no displacement in the direction Y, and rotations now are exactly opposite. We say OK. And we do exactly the same thing on the edges uh, on the right hand side. So, user defined a string for this edge and that edge, and let's uncheck these. These edges that I just picked happen to be in the YZ plane, therefore, there is no translation in direction X, and rotations are opposite. Say okay. We're almost done here, <clears throat> and now we're going to pressurize this thing. Pressurize it with uh, 100 uh, uh, 100 psi. So you can select uh, you can select this face and positive psi because as it is now, it looks like suction. Okay, and the top face. These are all pushing into the pressure vessel, trying to expand it and say, OK. The only thing that we haven't done is to specify the thickness of this, uh, this uh, pressure vessel. Uh, so let us assume that the top and the sides have the same thickness. Therefore, we can use the user-defined user -defined property, 2D property, uh, not user-defined property, I'm sorry, 2D property in the man modern manager toolbar and you select either this face or that face it doesn't matter these are both joined together already because of the way i did it and there's going to be a uh a thing in the, in the book it says uh, thickness of point point one and you say okay assuming i haven't forgotten anything i'm going to run this thing and no issues here. Uh, let us look at the deflection. And this is exactly what we expect when you pressurize uh, the, the, the vessel. Obviously, the ends uh, are going to try to expand. And also, there is deformation on the side, although it may not be obvious to you. The reason is that the deformation of the top face is so much, it, it blocks you being able to visualize anything. Actually, the, this, uh, the, the round face, side face, is also uh, expanding, but you cannot see it on the, on, on the screen. So let's say uh, this is fine, and let's look at the uh, def displacement. So the def displacement in the uh, symbol form looks like that. If you want contour, you uh, change it to average ISO and right there. Once again, don't get the impression that this side, because it's blue, it is not moving. Yes, it is, except that the displacement on the top is so much that you cannot actually see this. Uh, same thing with one Mises stress. Okay, you can see. 
Now, if you doubt what I'm, what I'm telling you, in other words, if you don't believe me that the site is also changing a shape, it's growing, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to close this, okay? Uh, deactivate this plot, deactivate this plot. Right there, deactivate it. And make a, a uh, make a, uh, say, a, a sphere group, okay? Which is going to exclude all the stuff on the top. And uh, let's see now, uh, where, is the, where are the groups here? Uh, okay, right there, okay? So let's make a sphere group, and you put it where you want. So I'm gonna move it here. Now it's excluding the portion on the top. Okay, actually let's move it a little bit so that we get more of the stuff here. I think, oh, that's gonna be, oh, that's not there. Ooh. That looks good. Okay, maybe you have to move it a little bit uh, to the left. That's, oh, gee. Okay, I don't like this, but uh, that's okay. Let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's drag it like that. Drag it like this. Oh, it didn't work. Okay, let's resize this so that it covers more of the there. Okay, <clears throat> and now activate, for example, the translation. Or the one Mises stress, activate it, double click on it so that you just get the sphere group. Hide the sphere, hide the sphere, and change it to average ISO. Uh, sorry, the rendering material shading. So you can see actually there is stress there. It's just that the, uh, even now, uh, things don't look very good because uh, uh, the, the higher you go, the closer you get to the top edge, the stresses are going to be uh, uh, higher. This is why, it, it, again, it masks what's happening down here. Now, the other way to convince ourselves that this is actually happening, we change the magnification factor. Oh, why don't we make it uh, five? How about that? And let's animate it. No, oh, still it's not very good. Uh, let me let me make it uh, 20. Well, well, let's make it big 50 and see what happens. There, you can see that actually this guy is moving. And uh, in fact, if I make it, uh, let's say 100, now the motion is going to be more obvious. Anyway, that's uh, you, you already knew that this was this was moving. So uh, I would like to stop as far as this problem is concerned. Uh, you can follow the book and see what's done, or uh, hopefully you came to my makeup, uh, makeup session in the afternoon uh, of uh, Tuesday that I missed the class in the morning. Once again, the difference between what I've done here and what's in the book is that I've taken a 45 degree sector, which means one of these sides is not quite uh, in a, uh, the plane of symmetry is not either X, XZ or YZ, which means you have to create local coordinate system, axis system, and then proceed uh, as we did the uh, axis system in the class in other uh, occasions. So I'm going to stop this thing here. I have no clue how big this file is going to be, probably around 50, 60 gig.